aside from the two full pulls we had earlier. One of the solid veterans in this sport out of Charlotte, North Carolina, the man in the black hat. There he is, Paul Norman, and the All-Pro Auto Parts War Wagon. Paul, a little bit down on engines. He was used to in years past running five-engine combinations. He's got three on the War Wagon. Indeed, just a little short on the horsepower, but he had a nice pull one that is going to put him in the third place for the moment. Paul Norman and the All-Pro Auto Parts War Wagon backs those three engines. Frank the Crank is coming at you. The All-Pro Auto Parts Max Tool sponsored machine out of Charlotte, North Carolina. We see he got a little sideways there in the middle of the track, but he keeps it under control without much problem. Still not enough to get to the full pull mark, and just a little bit down on horsepower here for Paul Norman. Three engines on this course with this sled is going to be tough to take it past that 210-foot mark. And I tell you, I think Paul got everything he could right there out of those three bad boys. You'll get a good look at him right here. He's not in the pull-off, but he is going to put himself into third place at least for the moment. The distance for Paul Norman out of Charlotte, North Carolina, in the war wagon, 190 feet, four and a half inches. So that's going to drop Dusty Arfons and the Dragon Lady back to four. Still two have made full pulls, John Heilman in Ohio Gold and Steve Jasky in Miller High Life. Another fuel-injected Allison aircraft engine-powered machine. This is the new and improved rambunctious Milton Bergman out of Fort Recovery, Ohio. Whoa, a big problems at the end of the run from Milton Bergman and the new and improved rambunctious. The most of his hands signaling to the officials at the end of the track that he knows he's broken and is going to need some help to get off the track here in the Superdome. Let's watch it again on the replay for these twin Allison aircraft engines on the new and improved Ram Bunches. Everything looks good until right at the end of the run. Nice and smooth. He's got some pretty good wheel speed and looks like he was ready to possibly move as high as third in there. Just kind of flash at the end and then something broke the weight block from flying off the front. And it's big problem for the pulling team out of Fort Recovery, Ohio. Once again, you can see the new and improved Ramp Bunches was nice, solid, straight, a smooth run. Everything looks good until right at the end. But then it all goes away in one fell swoop right there. But maybe he just pounded that front end down too hard, but as soon as he hit the ground, everything went away for new and improved Ramp Bunches. The distance still wasn't bad at 189 and a quarter. 180 feet, 9 and a quarter. Up next, Robert Elliott, the four Keith Black Hemi engine powered Fancy Farmer from Fancy Farm, Kentucky. Pretty good run, it's short of a full pull and a little bit of extra smoke that I think Robert's going to want to check on and certainly he had planned on. Still, without question that's the third best pull we have seen today robert elliott's fancy farmer again he uses four keys black hemi engines you'll notice two toward the front and then two are stacked on the sides of the tractor one of those engines is giving him a little extra smoke and I, again that's not something that he wants to see out of these very expensive modified pulling engines take a look at him from our end zone camera as robert elliott brings the fancy farmer right at you Uses up a lot of the track, but no real zigzagging problem. Again, just not quite enough to muscle it out. They've got a checkered flag at the end of the track now to signify that full pull mark at 210 feet. And he's about 10 feet short. 200 feet, 10 and a half inches for Robert Elliott and the Fancy Farmer. One of the most familiar sights in tractor pulling is that fight right there. The fire-breathing green monster and Art Arfon, world land speed record holder out of Akron, Ohio. He knows he needs 210 feet for a full pull. Here comes the green monster. of it so he didn't go out of bounds and I don't know if he made the full pull mark he is right at the line Art Arfons and the green monster had a great run going but he was headed out of bounds and had to pull that nose down 
We'll see if he got it out or if that cost him a full pull. At this point, Arfaz is in pretty good shape, but he has to try and bring it back across the track. And there, you see, he had to shut her down or go out of bounds and be disqualified. Let's watch it again, and you'll get a real good look from this angle at what happened to Art Arfaz. He had to bring the front end down, and that sent him back across the track, and there he had to stop it or go out of bounds, and it cost him a full pull. Look at that. He is an inch and a half short. 209 feet, 10 and a half inches, so only two will make the pull-off. John Heilman in Ohio Gold and Steve Gasky in the Miller High Life. A huge disappointment for Art Arpon, inch and a half short of making the pull-off in the Superdome. Well, Dusty didn't quite get it done, but there's always next time for her fans. Her dad, Art Arfon, and Robert Elliott came oh so close, but their efforts were no match for the full poles of John Heilman and Steve Jasky. Ohio Gold and Miller Highlights are being refueled for the pull-off in New Orleans, which we'll show you right after these messages.